First question comes from Alan Crater with the New York Times. Alan, go ahead. Thank you. Hi, Chris. How, how are you doing? Uh, good to see you. Just You've been around now quite a while with the club. How do you embrace your, your veteran status and your leadership status going into this season? Thank you. Good to see you, Alan. Well, I guess not see you. Good to hear you. Um, how do I embrace my... Uh, what is this, my, my tenth year now? Um, I don't know, I, I, don't think, I don't think I changed my mindset or changed, set, changed my approach at all. Um, continue to show up to the rink every day and try to get better. Uh, I think that applies to uh, our leadership group, our veterans, our young guys, everyone. Um, as long as we, we do that and continue to, to throw ourselves in the process, I think we'll have success. Next question comes from Bruce Beck with NBC4. Bruce, go ahead. Hey, Chris. Uh, how excited are you in general for just uh, playing a meaningful game here tomorrow? And what do you think of your blend of veterans and newcomers? Yeah, I think the the way the last season ended, um, we felt good after the end of the regular season, or at least the direction we were going in. And after the playoffs, uh, I know that everyone had a very, very bad taste in their mouths how things ended. Um, so I think this has been a, a long time coming, and I think our group's really itchy to, to get back to playing some, some meaningful hockey. Um, uh, we certainly have a lot of young guys. I think we're probably going to be up there as one of the youngest teams in the league again. Uh, but the, the, the older guys that we do have, the guys who have experience, um, have, have really been, been helping the young guys and I think meshing pretty well and getting to know the young guys. I think uh, for as young as our group is, I think something that I've, I've seen is um, guys who might have been 18, 19, 20 year olds last year and some guys in their first year look a lot more comfortable um, on the ice in the room. Um, I think that the, the group has, has been together long enough that uh, we, we, there, there's that comfortability with everyone um, and the new guys coming in have been welcomed and uh, I think have, have fit right in right away and I think the exciting thing about having such a young group is uh, how much potential this group has, how much potential each individual has uh, for growth uh, day by day and within the season. So um, I, I know that's something that I've said before, but it's a very exciting time to be a to be a Ranger and to be a Rangers fan. Next question comes from Dan Rosen with NHL.com. Dan, go ahead. Hi, Chris. Um, it's been a while, obviously, since the Rangers have had a guy wear the C, a full-time captain, and you guys have four alternates again, or assistants, whatever you want to call it. Is it? Is the C overrated on a, on a team that you believe has leaders on it? I mean, is that just, is there enough guys there that you don't actually have to put a letter C on anybody to to go through it? Do you think that's become a little bit overrated in the NHL? Um, might not be something that people want to hear, but um, I think a lot of times it's it's more for uh, the, the the fan base than anyone else. Um, at the end of the day, you need you need a, a big group of leaders to have any kind of success. Um, I mean, there's a number of guys in our room who who are ready to take on leadership roles, um, and I've I've said it before. I think uh, even even some of the younger guys, guys who are in their second, third year, um, there there is going to come a time where they need to lead, um, either stand up and say the right thing in the dressing room. Um, to, you know, lead by example on the ice, but it, there can't be any passengers if we're going to have success. Uh, I mean, you, you look back at the teams who have had success the last few years, and uh, you know, everyone knows their role, everyone buys in and does their job to the best of their ability, uh, and those teams have incredible depth. So, um, as long as everyone is is pulling in the same direction, I think uh, I think we'll be in good shape. Next question comes from Laura Albanese with Newsday. Laura, go ahead. Uh, Chris, you guys have been rebuilding for, for about two years now. Uh, even with the youth, uh, do you feel like this is the year, or do you feel that the playoffs is a reasonable expectation for you guys this year? Expectation is a funny word because, I mean, you ask every single guy on any team in the league, their, you know, their expectations are going to be higher for themselves and for their group than anyone outside of the the group can can possibly put on on them or the group so I think uh, I think it's our goal um, as opposed to an expectation um, I mean nothing is you're not entitled to anything or given anything in this league uh, I mean you have to earn it every single night uh, there there are no there are no bad hockey teams in this league every team is 
has got depth and talent and um, there's a reason it's the, the, the best league in the world. So uh, it, it's the goal, but to achieve that goal, we, we have to, you know, the old cliche, we have to take it one game at a time and, and continue to build and continue to progress because it's going to be a, it's going to be a grind. It's going to be a long season in a way and short also, I guess. So. Next question comes from Mark Rosenman with Sports Talk New York. Mark, go ahead. Hey, Chris. Uh, just to follow up on, on that last statement you made. So I guess the media, we kind of maybe overanalyze the 56 games schedule, the realignment, the, the rivalries. And, you know, Coach Quinn just said, though, know, when the puck drops, it's, it's hockey. Uh, do you hold that same thought, or is there something uniquely different for you, the way you have to prepare for this schedule? Yeah, I don't think a whole lot changes. Um, I mean, I, I personally played in some kind of strange and orthodox situations or games, I guess. Uh, I've played in a lot of outdoor games or atypical venues over the course of my career, and uh, there's always a lot of hype and excitement. I know it might be a strange comparison, um, but once you, you actually get into the game, it's still, it's still points on the line and it's still a hockey game. So. Um, with fans, without fans, uh, shortened schedule. Um, yeah, I agree with, with Coach Quinn. It's, it's, it's still hockey, and so we have to prepare like we do for every single game. I think the big difference in something going back to the lockout season, um, we don't have 82 games to, to figure it out. So, uh, I mean, I think a big, big focus on our training camp was acknowledging that, you know, we don't have as much time to prepare over the course of the training camp. We don't have as many games. Um, obviously to, to, to punch our ticket. So the, the biggest thing is to hit the ground running and have a good start.